almost on the day that I was planning to release my design video for this board, I actually received the board and received the board in uh, two versions. One is just the PCB and I also received three assembled versions of the board fully assembled and then my next task was to test it as a first impression I'm, i really like the way that this board was was put together it looks professional like it is a really well made board the silk screen the board itself the materials used they all feel professional top-notch stuff so the board itself when you look at it fully assembled there's a few surprises here that I'm going to point out that I didn't realize at first when I was designing it uh, what the end result would look like the first thing that drew my attention are the buttons believe it or not these are push buttons the enable or reset button and the boot button you can hardly see it it's almost as big as like a resistor or a capacitor and not easy to press and find the target there as far as the user interface is concerned everything is pretty nice except I'm going to definitely change these buttons and just put buttons that a normal person can interact with I can still work with these buttons but I have to use tools like for example to press these buttons I need to use the back of a tool like a, like a tweezers you can do it with a thumb and your nail but it's just very hard and you'll see what I mean later when I upload a few test sketches still works though so the buttons still work it's just the size that I should have chosen something bigger aside from that the SD card full sized is pretty nice I'm going to be testing later with this card here it's just an 8 gigabyte card but it's pretty easy that works nicely the ESP32 and its positioning are really nice out of the way and it just works I've got the sensors microphone and the light sensor right here I am having trouble making those work and I think I know what the problem is I'll talk about it later USB port works I've had successful communication with a computer I've also tested the charging circuit with a very old battery this one here I'm going to plug it in later and you'll see what happens with the charging circuit although this battery it's a very old battery so it doesn't really hold any charge so I'm going to have to order a new battery and test again but the first preliminary tests are good the exposed GPIOs work the I2C exposed uh, pins also work so I can connect an external display like this one I'm going to show you later the test that works the BME280 sensor works and the flash memory chip also works so pretty much everything works on this board except for the microphone so the microphone it kind of works unfortunately after assembly I discovered that the pin that I'm using for the microphone which is GPIO 5 belongs to ADC2 which shares resources with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and in order to use GPIO 5 uh, we need to disable Wi-Fi and I think that's a good trade-off so I'm considering uh, options of perhaps the microphone and the light sensor sharing GPIO 1 and I'll be able to switch one or the other either using a physical switch or perhaps I can use one of the free and available GPIOs such as 8 for example to programmatically switch the microphone or the light sensor on or off perhaps I can implement in software time slicing which means that for some part of the time I'll be listening on the microphone and some other parts of the time I will be sampling the light sensor so that's going to be for the next iteration so what I want to do next is to show you some of the tests that I've done or some of the test scripts that I've written uh, in order to test the various components of the board before I forget it I'm going to plug in the SD card all right so let's go to the Arduino IDE here's my first sketch that I'm going to use I've got a few others to show you here but I just want to see that the LED that I plugged to GPIO 19 you can see here GPIO 19 uh, is this one here where I've plugged this LED to make sure it works I'm going to also show you how to upload a sketch on this board and how I'm going to struggle a little bit with these two buttons okay so I've already selected the appropriate device and let's plug in the port 
uh, this one here and it's going to be ESP P2 C3 HC dev module that works all right all good so let's start the compilation and the upload so while it is happening I'm going to use my thumb to hold down the boot button And the tweezer for enable, release enable, release boot. And I'm not sure if I actually used that. <laughs> I'm going to do this again. I don't think I was able to hold the boot button down. So I'll try again. Yeah, I've got it now. Okay. Now, nah. I'll do this one more time. It's just the angle of my thumb on the boot button was not good enough okay boot down enable pressing both buttons waiting for the upload to start okay uploading release enable now release boot that starts the bootloader and the upload begins All right okay there you go and the LED blinks you can repeat the same test for the other pins so the pins that I'm exposing here are 18 and 8 and I've already repeated the test there and the GPIOs work I'm going to try out the BME280 sensor first because that's on the I squared C channel and then on the same same channel I've got the OLED display before I do that I'm going to show you the I squared C address finder this script will discover the two devices that that are connected to the ESP32 and show us the addresses so let's do that and again since I'm uploading a new sketch start the bootloader okay let's have a look at the serial monitor and there's two devices 76 and 3C cool let's check out the bme280 sensor now so here's the sketch so you can see that i had to customize the sda and SEL pins three and four because those are the pins used here so sda and there is a SEL. these numbers here are physical pin numbers not the gpio numbers so SEL is three and sda is four and there's the BME280 address, which is the one that was discovered by the scanner. All right, let's upload the sketch. All right, so it's not connected, so let's fix this port issue. So the port is 340. And upload. Press down boot and enable. And that works. So I squared C works, BME280 works. Let's try out the OLED screen or the display. I'm using the other fruit test script here. The only thing I had to do was to set the custom SDA and SEO pins upload. It works. Here's some graphics, a bit of text, some even animation. Okay, I'm just going to clean up a little and then test the devices on the SPI. Let's go for the flash memory first. So this script will just write a value to a flash memory address and then read it back. And that's proof that it works. Okay, let's bring up monitor and there you go. It wrote value 42 to address zero and then it read it back. And I can reset the board and it will do it again. So that works. Now let's test out the SD card upload there you go
you know, so there's a small file called test.txt with this little message on the SD card. So what I'll do is I will remove it from the board. I'll get into my computer and see if we can read this message. So here's a file test.txt and it says hello SD card. Okay. So that's proof that the SD card module works as well. So I've tested the SD card, flash, the GPIOs, I squared C and the sensor, the BME280, obviously the USB to serial bridge, this chip right here works as well. One thing that doesn't work, uh, and I'm not sure why yet, so I, I don't want to speculate, are the two LEDs, TX and RX, those are supposed to blink when there is traffic through this serial interface. I've checked and their orientation is correct. Um, the LEDs themselves, the, the devices work. So I'm not sure why these are not blinking. There's been a lot of obviously traffic going through. These are not working. I'm still investigating. If, if you know what it might be, if you've got any suggestions, just let me know in the comments. Now the next thing I'm going to try out is the light sensor and obviously the microphone it won't work but I'm going to show you what the output is so for the microphone I'm using pin 4 which is GPIO 5 let's upload it and see what happens and you can see the message is coming up it's going to stop it I'm not supported apparently I tried multi-shot as well but that doesn't work either so ADC unit not supported so that is the problem here can't really fix it through software or I can I can attempt a software hack but I don't think it's worth the effort because using this board without Wi-Fi which kind of defeats the purpose so I'm going to leave that as it is until I start work on the next iteration of this board so next and last test is the photo sensor so this sensor is connected to GPIO1 which is uh, right here it's pin physical pin 17 but GPIO1 this one actually kind of works it's just i think there is a problem with the wiring i'm sampling the voltage of the sensor from the wrong part of the sensor okay let's upload the sketch check out the serial monitor you can see the value here is maxed out it's supposed to go down when there is light hitting the sensor so i've got a flashlight here you can see there is something ha happening actually. Just going to go to like a less intense light. Just uh, yeah, I think this actually is kind of working. I'm not sure if it's working as it should, uh, but it seems like there is a reasonable response. There is something. Just uh, not sure if this is working as it should. So the, the reason that I'm saying that is let's go to the schematic. Okay, so here is the sensor and you can see that I'm sampling the sensor from pin three and there is a pull up resistor here, 10K resistor. This is having a result as you saw in this example, in this experiment. However, I have seen schematics online about this specific sensor indicating that there should be a pull down resistor like that this 10k resistor should be pulled down and the sampling should be on pin one not pin three i'm gonna have to experiment with this but if you know if you have something to suggest please do that in the comments below to recap i think that this board is pretty much 90 percent operational uh, and basically achieving the the technical goals that I've set for it. At this point, there are a bunch of things that I'm going to work on and redesign in the next iteration. Uh, I definitely am going to replace those buttons with thumb size buttons, buttons that I can press with my thumb without having to struggle. Another thing is to figure out why the TX and RX LEDs are not working and are not blinking. Another thing to look at is what's happening with the microphone sensor. One more thing I want to show you is some footage from my testing of the analog sensors, the battery and the regulator on the oscilloscope and the multimeter.
You can see here on the oscilloscope the output from the light sensor. The board right now is powered by a LiPo battery and I'm using a flashlight to trigger the light sensor. I'm not too interested in the absolute values, but I just want to see the fluctuation of the voltage on the sampling pin of the light sensor circuit. And that's why I'm using the oscilloscope here instead of the multimeter. As you can see, the voltage on the sampling pin changes as the light intensity that hits the sensor changes. And now repeat the same experiment to see the voltage on the sampling pin of the sound sensor circuit. As I tap the microphone, the voltage there fluctuates. The peak to peak voltage is around 50 millivolts, so I think that I need to increase the gain on the amplifier. And here you can see the voltage on the output of the voltage regulator when the board is powered by the LiPo battery. This battery right now is close to being depleted, but it still powers the board. When I plug in the USB power, the voltage goes up to around 3.3 volts. I've now completed a few full charge discharge cycles using two different LiPo batteries, and after that testing, I'm confident to say that the battery management circuit also works. That's it from this evaluation of prototype of the board. I'm really interested to know what you think about the board tests. If you have any suggestions for the next iteration of this board, really like to hear them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.